Hi everybody, my name is Amber Duran and I am here with Azusa Pacific University to help host our Spring Festival. We're very excited to be here. Um, we're very sad that we're not able to physically be there in person to help everyone along with the different activities, but we're still super excited that we're able to send in videos that you could follow along with. So for today, I will be helping you make a spring wreath, which I have an example right here. Perfect, okay, so now that you have your supplies, we are gonna begin by actually starting to make the wreath. Okay, so to begin, we first need to grab our paper plate and we also need to grab our pair of scissors. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna take the paper plate and divide it into half down the center. Kind of like a taco. <laughs> okay, so now that we have it folded, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna cut along the edge. So the next step to work towards our end result of our wreath is to cut out different pieces and colors of paper. We're going to grab the paper, whatever color that you want, and we're going to cut about one inch strips the long way. Okay, so once you have your strip, depending how long the piece of paper is, mine's pretty long, you can either cut it in half or you can cut it into thirds. So for me, I'm going to cut it into thirds. They're not exactly the same size, but they're about the same. Perfect. So you have your little strips now, and the next step is to glue them onto the wreath. So let's get started. Okay, so now that we are done with the paper part, I think it's time to move on to the ribbon part. You're gonna grab the ribbon, whatever color you want. For me, I chose pink. Um, and then you're gonna grab however much you want to make the loop that will help hang up the ribbon. So, I think I want a little bit more than that, so let's see. All right, so that looks about right for me. And so what I'm gonna do is where the two ribbons meet, which is about right here. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it. We're gonna put it through the hole of the wreath. And then we are gonna tie a little knot where the two ends meet to make sure it can stay strong and hang wherever we want it to hang. Okay. All right, so now that our wreath is ready, what we're going to want to do, if you would like, if not, that's totally okay, but we're going to add a little ribbon to the bottom part right here. I'm going to cut it however long I want. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the ribbon and fold it over in half. Make sure the two ends meet so that we have like one long piece. Here, where it folded over, we're gonna just make a little bow. Awesome. Ooh, I like this. Okay, so here's my little bow. The ends are about the same length, which is perfect. Okay, and then the next step would be to glue the bow onto the end. So, 
We're gonna grab some glue. This time we're gonna add the glue to the ribbon. If you wanna add it to the paper, that's totally fine too. I think I might have to add some, but for right now I'm gluing it to the ribbon. So lining up where I have it hanging, I'm gonna put it directly below it. Okay, so the next step would to be to add different decorations to it. So if you would like to color on it, if you would like to add little designs, flowers, whatever you have, um, that's absolutely perfect. If you wanna cut out shapes or pictures or whatever you have, that's awesome. So be creative however you want. It's your wreath. Feel free to hang it up in your room. Do whatever you want with it. Um, so just thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope you have fun with the rest of the spring festival. Um, thank you all for watching. Hello everyone at Oak Tree Lodge. My name is Bryson Mendoza. I am a sophomore at Asusa Pacific University. Joining me today is my younger sister. I'm Brianna Mendoza and I'm a sophomore in high school. And today we're gonna to sing for you guys a song by the name of How He Loves Us. So if you know the words, please sing along. And if you don't, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day, and God bless. Hi, my name is Anne, and I'm part of the small group communication team from Azusa Pacific University. We were super bummed that we are not able to be there with all of you in person to do all of these fun activities, but I personally hope that you still have a good time doing these. 
and I think it will be super fun. So today we're going to do aromatherapy painting. I am not claiming to be an amazing artist here, but these are just some very relaxing, fun art therapy techniques that I have gathered over the years. And especially today we're going to be doing aromatherapy with essential oils in our paints and I'll be also sharing some prompts so we can use this as a cathartic art exercise if you feel so inclined. Another step you may want to take as you're doing this is to put your hair up, tie up any strings, anything that's hanging down that you don't want to get in your art. So that's another recommendation. I will be doing that soon as well. We will have six prompts today, so you will need a color with a scent in it for each prompt. So that's six colors. So take your time to prepare those. I like to mix colors together to make unique colors. So, um, and then we'll begin. As we go, I will not be showing you my canvas because this is a personal experience. And if you begin to compare your canvas with another person's, it kind of just takes the whole exercise off the tracks, but I promise you, I will show my finished project. project. Don't expect a lot, um, but it's going to be fun. So here we go. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of scents and paints you guys will have, but I have taken just a little bit of orange paint and a little bit of gold paint. And the scent that I felt best went with these paints was orange. So I'm going to take one drop. This stuff is super potent, so whatever you're comfortable with. But for me, I'm going to go with one drop of the orange essential oil and mix it in with these two paints. So I have my two minute timer right here. And as soon as I click my timer, if your person who is timing will click theirs as well, that would be great. So our very first prompt is going to be, I'm going to ask you to think of a situation that made you upset or made you angry, um, something that frustrated you, maybe made you feel out of control or just very angry or upset, anything in that realm. Um, and then take one color that you think best fits that emotion. And when the two minute timer starts, you're just going to paint that emotion however you feel, maybe all across your canvas, maybe just a little something, whatever you want, whatever feels right for two minutes. Ready, set, go. Great job. Our second prompt is going to be thinking of a situation or really anything that makes you feel sort of sad or disappointed or anything in that realm of emotion, maybe lonely, loneliness, um, and then choose one of your colors that you'd like to use in the next two minutes and paint that emotion however you see it in your head or however you want to portray it. Ready? Let's go. Great job. Our next prompt is any time or anything that has made you feel like a wanderer, like you're lost, like you're numb, maybe detached. Uh, choose one of your colors and spend the next two minutes illustrating that feeling. Let's go. Our next prompt is someone or something that represents love to you. Whatever you see in your head when you think of love, pick one color. I know it's super tricky and illustrate that onto your canvas for the next two minutes. Next, I'd like you to think of, this is very similar to love for some people, but for others it's not. Um, next, we're going to think about something, a situation, a person, a occasion, activity that makes you feel happy. That's the word, happy. And um, choose a color and illustrate that happiness however you please. Lastly, our final prompt 
is the feeling of contentment, of satisfaction. Some might associate that with happiness, some might not, but feeling content and like you are where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing, that is a feeling that we've all felt and chased. So if you select just your last color, probably the one that's left, and use that to illustrate contentment however you like. Okay, this is my painting all finished. These are going to be very simple, but now is the amazing opportunity to add in more to what you've already done. I don't know, maybe you can tell which prompts inspired which things, but I went for a landscape approach. Um, and now I'm going to add in maybe more sky, more trees, I'm not really sure, but now's the time I want to invite you guys to play with what you did create add to it with no constraints, no prompts, just do whatever feels right. I really hope you enjoyed this exercise um, and that it was cathartic and releasing and kind of helped you reflect on a few things. I'm very bummed we weren't able to do something a little bit more extensive in person, but I look forward to maybe paying a visit next year when I'm back in California. It was great hanging with you guys. Hi you guys, my name is Emma Davey. I am a freshman at Azusa Pacific. I am so excited to be with you guys today. Um, I hope that you all are doing so well and that you guys are staying inside, staying healthy. And yeah, I um, am so bummed that me and my team couldn't be with you guys today, put this event on in person, but we are so excited you guys chose to do it virtually um, and still participate in these crafts. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to work with some clay, specifically air drying clay. Um, we are going to be making little pinch pot bowls. They're super easy, super fun to work with. Um, and yeah, let's just get started. The materials for this video are pretty simple. Um, the first thing that you guys are going to have provided for you is some clay. It's going to be air drying clay, so it should be pretty easy to work with. You're going to need roughly around this much, um, enough that like fits in the size of your palm. A rolling pin, this is not a needed material, but this is something that you use to flatten the clay out. You guys can use your hands, you can use your arms, whatever works. I had a tiny bit amount of water that you guys are going to use at the very end to smooth it out. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have a little jar of water near you. Right here I'm smoothing out the clay. I'm doing that with a roller but as mentioned earlier you guys can do that with your hands or do that simply with your elbows um, to smooth it out but just make sure it's as long and as thin as you guys can get it to be. The second step with forming your bowl is you're going to want to start forming the coils. So as you can see here I was cutting off a strip and then I started putting it in between my hands to make this fast coil motion. Um, you're going to want to do this with all the remainder of your clay and make as many strips as you can um, until it looks like this. Now that you have all your coils, you're going to begin with making the bowl. So you're going to start with making a coil base. That is just when you grab one of the coils and wrap it around itself. And then you're going to grab another coil and you're going to connect it. Um, to the edge of your first coil and just continue to build around it and you're going to want to put it towards the rim um, or the edge to kind of grow a bowl figure and grow width with it. Um, you have the option of making your bowl either really tall and skinny or wider and shorter. Um, that is all up to you and depending on how many coils you would like to use. But you just continue this step until you feel comfortable um, with where you're at with your bowl. Now with the water, you are going to want to smooth out any cracks you have, any sharp edges you have, or any holes you have um, by just dabbing your finger in the water and then pressing onto the clay. Hi you guys, I am back with my younger sister. This is Claire. Hi guys, um, I'm Claire and I'm a junior in high school. Yeah, so we both made these coil pots together. We're super excited about them. We both hope that for you guys, you were able to follow along well and that the tutorial was pretty simple for you guys. Yeah, so the drying process for these is going to take around a day for you guys. Yeah, so just keep them in a spot in your room um, where they can dry and kind of rest for 24 hours because it is air drying clay. It does take time. Um, but yeah, around 24 hours, they should be good and you guys can put stuff in it or yeah, however you guys want to use them. So we thank you guys so much and hope that you guys have a great rest of your day.
Bye. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. I don't know exactly when you guys are seeing this, so I thought I'd just say all three of them. Uh, my name is Reed Bowman. I am one of the students who is partnering with your organization over at the Oak Tree Lodge uh, for my small group class, for my small group group. Um, we were helping you guys put on the spring festival, this upcoming one. And uh, sadly, it did not all go as planned and we are not able to be there in person, but we are there in spirit. And we put together uh, this video through our technological devices. So though it's not exactly what we expected or wanted, this is how it had to go. Um, my job here and my uh, role was to do a little trivia for you guys. Uh, and all of these questions are based around the year 1935. Uh, it's a fun game. I've played it before. Uh, you don't have to be uh, that old to play it. I'm 21. <laughs> um, but hopefully this is a real fun game for you guys. And I'm going to be your quote unquote host. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. To run through the rules real quick, uh, everybody needs a piece of paper and a pencil. And what you're going to do is you're going to number it uh, A all the way through O. So it should be about 15 letters long. Uh, so not that hard. And then I'm going to go through the questions. And then after, I'm going to go through the answers for you guys. Okay, so we're all going to get through this together. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay. Um, so to start it off, I'm going to go ahead. Here we go. So for the first question, uh, A, who was the U.S. president in the year of 1935? Was it A, Hoover, or B, F.D. Roosevelt? Hoover, F.D. Roosevelt. Okay. B, next question, which Looney Tunes character is created? Is it Bugs Bunny or is it Porky the Pig? Bugs Bunny or Porky the Pig? Going on to C, how much did a postage stamp cost? Postage stamp cost. Was it three cents? Or B, five cents. A, three cents. B, five cents. <clears throat> Letter D. Which board game hits the marketplace? Is it A, Monopoly? Or B, Sorry? A, Monopoly. B, Sorry. Next question. Letter E. Which act is signed in by the president or by the U.S. Congress? Which act is signed in by the U.S. Congress? Is it A, Social Security, or B, Wages and Hours? A, Social Security, or B, Wages and Hours? Going on to letter F. Which toy doll is number one at Christmas? Is it A, Patsy, or B, Shirley Temple? A, Patsy, B, Shirley Temple. <clears throat> Letter G, which product was invented in 1935? Was it the beer can or was it the shopping cart? Was it the beer can or was it the shopping cart? Okay, going on to H. The first blank bowl game is played. Is it A, orange, or B, rose? A, orange, or B, rose? Letter I. Which landmark is opened? 
Is it the Golden Gate Bridge, A, or B, the Hoover Dam? The Golden Gate Bridge, A, or the Hoover Dam? <clears throat> Letter J. Which chocolate bar is sold in stores? Now, I'm a little young to know what this is. I've never heard of this, but it's A, the Aero, A-E-R-O, or is it B, the Three Musketeers? I know what the Three Musketeers are. They're very good. Going on to question K. Which song and artist is top of the charts in 1935? Is it A, Cheek to Cheek by Fred Astaire. I think I pronounced that right. Astaire? Or B, One O'Clock Jump by Count Bassie. Maybe it's Basie. Again, I'm a little too young for this. <laughs> Going on to I. The world's first blank is invented. Is it A, the aerosol spray can, or B, the parking meter. The aerosol spray can, or the parking meter. Going on to letter M, who hits the final home run of their career? Is it Babe Ruth, A, or B, Jackie Robinson? Going on to letter N, which celebrity was born in 1935? I'm sure there's quite a bit of popular celebrity, celebrities born in 1935, but in this case, is it A, Julie Andrews, or is it B, Sophie Loren? For the last question, what, for O, what was the life expectancy? Is it A, 61 years, or B, 63 years? Okay, and now we're gonna go with the answers for this 1935 trivia-based game. So, letter A, who was the first, or who was the US president in 1935? The answer is F.D. Roosevelt. Letter B, which Looney Tunes character is created? Bugs Bunny or Porky Pig? The answer is Porky Pig. That came by surprise. I didn't know that one. Letter C, how much did a postage, postage stamp cost in 1935? Was it A? three cents or B, five cents? The answer was A, three cents. Now they're about 50 cents, I think. We count our blessings. Letter D, which board game hits the marketplace in 1935? A, Monopoly, B, the game Sorry. The answer is A, Monopoly. We all love Monopoly. I've played it a lot of times. It's a lot of fun game, but it takes a really long time to play. Letter E, which act is signed in by the US Congress? Was it A, the Social Security? Or was it B, Wages and Hours? The answer is A, Social Security. Letter F, which toy doll is number one at Christmas? This is my favorite question. Is it A, Patsy? I don't know what that is. Or is it B, Shirley Temple? The answer is B, Shirley Temple. Uh, just to mention, I've seen almost all of the Shirley Temple movies when I was a kid. I loved them and watched them with my sister. Is it, okay, going on to G. Which product was invented in 1935? Was it A, the beer can, or was it B, the shopping cart? Both are very useful, but the answer was A, the beer can. Thank goodness. 
Going on to H. The first blank bowl game is played. Was it A, the Orange Bowl, or was it B, the Rose Bowl? The answer is A, the Orange Bowl. I, which landmark is opened in the year of 1935? Is it A, the Golden Gate Bridge, or is it B, the Hoover Dam? The answer is B, the Hoover Dam. I visited that place when I was a kid. It was pretty, pretty cool. Not gonna lie. I liked it a lot. <clears throat> okay, J. Which chocolate bar is sold in stores in 1935? The one that I couldn't uh, say. The a Aero, a Aero, the Aero. Or B, the Three Musketeers. The answer was the one that I couldn't even say. The arrow. A-E-R-O. A-R-O. K. Which song and artist is top of the charts in 1935? Was it the song Cheek to Cheek by Fred Astaire? Or is it B, One O'Clock Jump? I count Basie. Bassy. The answer is A, cheek to cheek. Going on to the next one. The world's first blank is invented. Is it A, the aerosol spray can, or B, the parking meter? Though they both are uh, loved and useful, the answer is B, the parking meter. I wish that wasn't invented, It'd save a lot of money. Going on to the next one, letter M. Who hits the final home run of their career? Is it A, Babe Ruth, or is it B, Jackie Robinson? Letter N. Which celebrity was born in 1935? A, Julie Andrews, or B, Sophia Loren? A, Julie Andrews, or B, Sophia Loren? The answer is A, Julie Andrews. And for the last one, O, life expectancy was A, 61 years, or B, 63 years? I think the lifespan is a little bit longer now. I've heard, I don't know. The answer is A, 61 years. And that concludes the answers for the trivia part. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and go through this and then pause if you need to, uh, and then so nobody gets confused or can catch up. Uh, and yeah, that concludes the, the trivia game thing. <laughs> what we're going to do, you're going to add up uh, 1 to 15, and whoever got the most right out of 15 is the winner. And if there's any ties... Well, you're going to have to pick who won. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, really, we are very sad that we didn't get to be with you guys and uh, meet each and every one of you. Uh, but just know that all of you guys are in our thoughts and prayers. And we're thinking about you guys. Uh, we're so sorry that that this has played out the way it has and it's been hard for all of us. Alrighty, once again, my name's Reed and I am signing off. Have a good day.